Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Made it to the end of another work week, and we are going to continue on with draft profiles. And like yesterday, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at a position that I just don't know about. I don't know how important it's going to be to this team going into this next season with this new defense. And it's just really hard to know what these players are going to actually be in the NFL. Sometimes they show you one thing in college, they get to the NFL and they show they're actually a, a different kind of player. It, it does happen. Or at the very least, they're capable of things they didn't show you they were capable of in college. Lots of reasons why that could be. The context, the scheme, the coaching, whatever. So it, it, it's always kind of hard when you're dealing with something like this. When you know you're running what is supposed to be a hybrid defense that is leaning 3-4 but you don't totally know exactly what kind of personnel they want to fill that 3-4 with, it's hard to know exactly who they could be evaluating. So today's video is going to be about the outside linebacker position. So when I say outside linebacker, by the way, I mean in a 4-3 context. So the, the KJ Wright type of role, or the maybe you could say Bruce Irvin kind of role. Those guys, not the pure rushers, or I shouldn't say pure rushers, but mostly rushers like the Thibodeaux and the Boy Mafes of the world. This is more the K.J. Wright type, the uh, last year Jordan Brooks type. Obviously, now he's moving to the interior. But if we're going to still run a decent chunk of 4-3, or if maybe we feel like we have the flexibility to put 4-3 type players within our hybrid, then there's kind of a need here, right? Because you lose Bobby and Jordan Brooks moves over, and you've got an issue at outside linebacker. Uh, BBK, Barton, who knows what these guys are going to be, if anything. At this point, I don't expect anything from BBK. Barton, I think he could have some value, but he might be more of an inside linebacker too, by the way. He might just be a backup to Brooks. So, if you look at it from that context, then... Maybe there is room to add um, an outside linebacker in this draft. And also, like I said, these players might be capable of things that you don't expect. So these three guys are specifically pegged to be 4-3 fits. But sometimes you just don't know until they actually do it. And then they tell you they can do it. And you realize, oh, they could do it all along. So there are three guys here. Let's see what they can do and try to judge if they could fit in here. Okay, so the first guy is Brandon Smith. I've actually gotten a lot of questions about him in recent times. A lot of people mention him as a potential candidate for the Seahawks in the draft. Uh, Penn State guy, uh, linebacker U, as we all know. They produce a lot of them. Six foot one, 232 pounds, 4.5240, which is really good. But he actually ran a 4.38 when he came out of high school. So this dude has extreme speed. And if he can get back any of the speed he had coming out of high school, you're talking one of the faster linebackers in the league. He has two years of significant production at Penn State. 2020, 37 tackles, eight for loss. So a lot of stuff in the backfield, a couple sacks, a pick. 2021 was the year he really put himself on the map. 81 tackles, nine for loss, two sacks, five pass deflections. Um, the big boards are all over the place, though. Walter Football thinks he could go in the second. ESPN, Tankathon, PF... Well, I'm sorry. PFF also thinks he could go in the second. ESPN and Tankathon say the third. <clears throat> T, uh, the Draft Network says fourth. CBS is more like fifth. So, wide, wide range here. I would guess somewhere around the late third or early fourth, personally. He's a great athlete. I mean, uh, I showed you the... I, I talked about the 40-time thing, right? Dude ran a 4.3840 at one point just a handful of years ago. If he can get back to that, if that 40 time I have on screen ends up being deceptive in some way, you have one of the fastest straight line linebackers in the world. He's very good in coverage. Very strong coverage abilities. And look, <clears throat> if we're looking for a dude to pair with Jordan Brooks, we need a guy who can cover because Jordan Brooks can't. So if you're looking at Brandon Smith and you're saying... Maybe we play him at four three uh, at three four inside, and then we have him play the will when he's when we're doing four three stuff. They play off each other kind of right, 
one guy can cover, the other guy can't. Appealing. He's lengthy. He's got good length. <clears throat> he should be excellent in zone defenses in pass-heavy situations. So I don't know if he's a three-down linebacker, for reasons I'll get into in a second here, but if you put him on the field in obvious passing situations, I think he'll do really well. Now, he didn't play a ton at Penn State, so he is going to need time to develop when he gets to the pros. I do think he struggles a little bit in his run fits. He did make a decent chunk of tackles for loss at PSU, but overall his run defense was considered to be inconsistent. And generally speaking, I think his play was found to be somewhat inconsistent. Sometimes you see the freak athlete that makes you think of uh, all the other great linebackers that have come out of Penn State. LeVar Arrington, recently Micah Parsons. It's, it's there, but it doesn't show up as much as it did for those guys. All right, that's probably the golden goose of this group. That's probably the most interesting guy. These last th two guys are sleepers who caught my attention. Uh, first is Nephi Suell from Utah, the Utes. Little smaller, six feet flat, 228 pounds, 4.6740. Measurables are okay, 7.013 cone, 4.33 20-yard shuttle. Two seasons of significant production. I think he was playing at Nevada for a couple years and then transferred. Uh, 2020, 40 tackles, 5 for loss, 2 picks, 2 pass deflections, 1 forced fumble. 2021, took his game to the next level, 89 tackles, became one of the leaders on that defense. Uh, 7.5 tackles for loss, 1 pick. The <clears throat> ESPN and CBS boards have him going around the 7th round. Draft Network has him as a upper-end-ish UDFA. So you are probably looking at like a 7th round pick or a UDFA. This guy will be lucky to get drafted. He's a decent athlete. He's certainly no Brandon Smith that we just looked at, but he is a decent athlete. He's slower and smaller, but he's not inept in that area. He's very effective playing in space. He's another guy who I think is going to be able to do well in coverage, which kind of fills a need if you're looking for a Jordan Brooks running partner. He's strong in zone coverage really good at playing his zones and then coming up and getting to passes that are thrown underneath in, in, in his zone, really good at understanding route combinations and reading where he's supposed to be in a zone. He's decent in man. He's passable. He does show some man skills. He's a strong run defender. He's got good instincts against the run, good instincts on where to go, where the hole's going to be and how to plug it. And he does bring some inside blitzing ability to the table despite his relatively small size. I don't know if that means he's going to be a 3-4 fit. That doesn't necessarily mean that, of course. But Nephi Sewell is a guy who I think will do well as a 4-3 will. And if we feel like his skill set is something we can utilize in this defense, then that's got to be at least somewhat appealing when you consider it's going to take no real assets. Now, he is small. He has shorter arms, which is going to be a problem. And even though I do think he's a good run defender, I think NFL level strength may be too much for him. I think he'll get pushed around a little bit by some of these guys, which is <clears throat> really a problem if you're going to run a lot of 3-4. So the, the initial problems I had with the idea of taking a linebacker like this still apply, but hell, again, we will know more about this defense when we see it on the field. We're not going to be able to know about it yet. We can't even trust what these guys say clearly because we all got bamboozled on the uh, Russell Wilson situation. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, last guy is Jeremiah Jemmel from North Carolina. Another later round sleeper in all likelihood. Uh, 6'1", 225 pounds, ran a slower 44.7. I believe he was the guy who took over for Chaz Surratt at North Carolina as kind of their leader. Uh, Surratt was a really interesting player that I looked at last year. Um, 84 tackles in 2019, 7.5 for loss, 2.5 sacks. Um, the production he had over the next few years was very similar. Um, 70 to 80 tackles, 6.5 to 7.5 tackles for loss, a few sacks. Made a couple interceptions, made some pass deflections. Um, n nothing stood out, but he was consistently productive. Um, Draft Network says high and undrafted. <clears throat> ESPN says like fifth round, maybe sixth. Walter Football is in the fourth round through the sixth. CBS says high priority undrafted player. So the 
positives about Jeremiah Jemmel. He's an on-field leader, leader for the Tar Heels defense. He rallies to the ball quickly. He's somebody who has a pretty good understanding of where to go in run defense. He's got a high football IQ. He can play all three downs. He offers value on all three downs. He should, at the very least, be a good special teamer. Although it should be said he didn't do special teams at North Carolina. It's just based off the way he plays, it seems like he will be able to do that. The fact that he's always giving high effort should mean that he maximizes his potential as a player, which is always important to look for in situations like this. You don't doubt his want to be special. You just doubt maybe the flesh will be weak despite the spirit being willing. Because this flesh is a little bit weak. He's small and he's not very strong. He will get pushed around in the NFL. Players are going to be a lot bigger and stronger than him. He's going to get pushed around. He's not a great athlete either, so he's sacrificing a lot here. This is a guy who seems to win mostly with, with his effort and with his intelligence. He's not winning on his physical abilities. And he's not ever going to really be that good in coverage. He's a pretty weak cover player. So he's you get what you pay for, right? Jeremiah Jemmo might be a 7th round pick. He's probably worth about that. And uh, everything positive and negative you can say that comes with that applies. And those are the three guys who stood out to me as being a good mix of value and ability. Uh, Brandon Smith obviously stands head and shoulders above everyone else. I still wonder if somebody of his size is going to work in this defense. But again, at the end of the day, that's for Clint Hurt and Sean Desai and Pete Carroll and John Schneider to figure out. I do think he's good. And if you feel like he can work in your defense, then I do think he will probably find a way to work in it in a good capacity. But um, these other two guys are just deep, deep sleepers. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know who your favorites are. I'm out of here. See you guys later today. Might be a video later today. Will be Twitch streams tonight one way or the other. See you guys later. Go Hawks.